So I've been thinking a lot about religion, a lot about spirituality and, and God and what that word even means and, you know, why people believe this stuff and why people are so uh, transformed by this stuff. Um, you know, some people are transformed in what you might think is a negative way. Other people are transformed in amazing ways, in positive ways. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's something going on, you know, lots of people think we should just you know, get rid of religion and start being rational and scientific, but, you know, that's not human nature. Human nature is to experience mystery, and that's what's really important. I mean, religion shouldn't be something you learn from your parents or from history. Religion has to be something that you create in your own life, that you apply to your own way of looking at at the world and dealing with the problems inherent to existence. I mean, if you don't, if you don't create your own expression of spirituality, you're not going to experience your spirituality. You're just going to have learned a bunch of beliefs and a bunch of words to repeat. I mean, we don't emphasize this enough about spirituality and about religion. We just, we just, we criticize too often. And it's fine to criticize these, these hand-me-down religions. And, you know, I'm not saying we just start from a vacuum. But to have an authentic spirituality or an authentic religious uh, perspective, you need to have experience what you believe in. You can't just believe it as an abstraction. It needs to be con concrete. It needs to be something that... Uh, you face directly, and in that sense, you can't. It can't be a hand-me-down. It has to be built from, if not the ground up, then at least a second story up. I mean, get your foundation from from one of the great wisdom traditions that we have. You know, whatever it may be, but then you gotta you gotta evolve that tradition. You got to uh, make it work for you. You have to. You have to. Uh, apply it to yourself and really create something new for you because you can't just adopt an old religion and and be genuine with it I don't think in other words you can't just be raised into whatever kind of community it is whether it's Jewish or Christian or, or Islamic and just unquestioningly assume that religion because then that's not religion. It's culture. And it's a fine cultural expression. It has nothing to do with, with God, with the mystery of existence, with uh, those you know hidden esoteric secrets that nobody can speak, those silent states of consciousness that we all know is there, but that we skeptical of because we can never articulate them, we can never prove them. Um, I'm going to read uh, a couple lines from Sri Aurobindo's Life Divine. I think it's pretty uh, related. The finite cannot remain permanently satisfied so long as it is conscious either of a finite greater than itself or of an infinite beyond itself to which it can yet aspire. And if the finite could be so satisfied Yet the apparently finite being who feels himself to be really an infinite, or feels merely the presence or the impulse and stirring of an infinite within, can never be satisfied till these two are reconciled. Till that is possessed by him, and he is possessed by it in whatever degree or manner. Man is such a finite seeming infinity, and cannot fail to arrive at a seeking after the infinite. He is the first son of earth who becomes vaguely aware of God within him of his immortality or of his need of immortality. And the knowledge is a whip that drives in a cross of crucifixion until he is able to turn it into a source of infinite life and joy and power. He is the first son of earth who becomes vaguely aware of God within him, of his immortality or of his need of immortality. You know, that's important, I think, because people think we can outgrow a spiritual or religious perspective on life 
and that we can replace it with rationality and science. But um, I think that's childish. I think human beings, what makes us human, that's what I mean by spirituality. The fact that we are aware of ourselves, aware of nature. We're aware that, that this is all happening. We're aware we can we can read and write and paint and make music and make love and just communicate with each other and you know, we just we take it for granted and we think it's it's all supposed to make sense and we don't we don't pay attention to anything that doesn't make sense, you know, that we can't that we can't spell out into some logical step-by-step -step cause effect formula anything that falls outside of of that everyday habitual way of speaking about the world we ignore we ignore it and if we would just become more aware of it more often i think we would would all be a lot more fulfilled and we would be a lot more peaceful and a lot less desirous of things we don't need and things that bring us harm and cause harm to others we wouldn't be so morally lazy either because we're so distracted now that we let bad things go on and we contribute to bad things going on because we're just too lazy to stop like almost 700,000 civilians are dead in Democratic Congress just decided that they're not going to do what they said they're going to do. What the American people voted them into office to do. And, you know, no one's riding in the streets. We're just sitting at home and feeling bad about it. It's a really shitty situation. And it's all about religion. It's all about religion. You know, we can't just turn our backs on, on on spiritual perspectives because that's what's. I mean, I'm I'm reluctant to call terrorism a spiritual activity. But whoever is a terrorist, whoever these these extremist people who are willing to bomb to blow themselves up for what they believe in that only human beings can do that and that is I think the pinnacle of, of the human spirit is that kind of sacrifice you know I'm not justifying the sacrifice I'm just saying if we don't face up to the fact that this human existence is a lot more profound and uh, that we have access to infinity and transcendence and God isn't just a meaningless concept God is an actual experience God is something you can confront and it's something we have to confront because we're just running away from it and, and the result is you know it's like when you repress an emotion it just you know it comes in the back door and it and it fucks up something else unconsciously that you don't even realize is, is happening and, and I mean that's what's going on right now with us we're thinking that we can just outgrow God and run the world on, on our own with just you know rationality not the rationality rationality is important but it's not the end in itself it's not the end in itself so yeah thanks for listening